Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a very special guest with me. This is Izzy Cornblow. Hi, yeah, Cornblow, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Said it right. We actually went to high school together. Please make sure you guys go follow her YouTube channel. I will link it all down below and also follow her Instagram, izzy.cornblow. But I want to tell you a little bit about Izzy, or I guess Izzy, Izzy will just introduce herself. Izzy will talk about Izzy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I have a YouTube channel basically about chronic illness and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a condition that we both have. Because specifically we have like the same subtype. Hypermobile yeah, the hypermobile EDS. Type. So um, we found that pretty funny because we didn't even know back in high school. Right, and we went to high school together. We went to LaGuardia, the fame school. You guys have heard me talk about it before. Izzy was a vocal major, I was an art major, and we both have different paths, obviously. She actually is doing really incredible things right now. She is training to be a genetic counselor, right? Yeah, genetic to counselor. help patients with EDS, I assume. I mean, I'm definitely going to help <laughs> patients with EDS, but I'm probably gonna do just like something more general. Um, right. Yeah, and I'm staying in the city. I'm going to Mount Sinai. So, yeah. we will be doing more collaborations and potentially a New York City meet and greet. So, anyone watching this on either of our channels, definitely keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah. We'll, we'll think about it. We'll make it COVID size. COVID, we'll make it COVID safe. COVID safe, yeah. COVID, COVID safe. friendly. I mean, no, so, not COVID friendly. That's the opposite. Right. COVID, you don't want friendly COVID, COVID safe. Yeah. Exactly. So, in our other video, in Izzy's video on her channel, which I would go watch hers, it's like the part one of this video, and then this is the part two, but we really, <laughs> okay, Sally, we talked about being in high school and being chronically ill, and our experience briefly in college being chronically ill, and I think there's even more that we could talk about, yeah. just in general, being like young people that are chronically ill, and different kinds of experiences with friends, and with people, and I guess like inherent ableism that exists in society and the ways that that affects us as chronically ill people so that's just what I think we're gonna go ahead and talk about here yeah and especially a little bit more on the college side of things like one thing I quickly mentioned in my video that I didn't get to expand upon is the struggles that I had finding housing in college and getting the accommodations that I need. right did you have trouble with that at all so I didn't really want to make my disability and my chronic condition like a public thing so I just went to room with somebody I actually knew from high school and we roomed together and we ended up getting like this super nice dorm room it was on the first floor which I know that was a part of your struggle and it was it was pretty simple for me and then I lived in my sorority house the next year I was on the third floor which was difficult yeah but it was like for like cheaper housing and more accessible and and um, available I should say and then last but not least I lived in um, an apartment by myself and that was difficult but I should have looked into accommodations because I know USC does an okay job of that for people that are chronically ill and, and have disabilities yeah like for my school the problem is is that somebody an outsider would say they do it too well but like it's kind of the opposite they accommodate too many people who truthfully don't need accommodations and I'm not saying that as somebody who's like those people don't look sick like gosh I would literally never say that right if this is a known fact I have so many friends who have actually gotten housing accommodations um, who don't need them who blatantly say to me I'm gonna see if I can get myself a letter to get an accommodation right and as a result so many people do it that that they actually started preventing kids from getting mm -hmm. housing and, accommodations. And this is the same it. this is the same kind of thing that even happens with academic accommodations, which we briefly mentioned, and the fact that like let's say you just want to use your laptop for notes because it's more convenient to you. For someone like myself who actually has an injury, I had an injury when I was seven and, or not when I was seven, when I was in seventh grade, I was probably about 12 and I can't write the same. It really pains me to write. I use my laptop, I've used my laptop since I was about seven years old in seventh grade. What the hell am I talking about seven years old? You really that stuff. It's in stuff my in head, head, the sevens. Yeah. I guess it might be like my angel numbers talking to me. So. What I was saying is, for someone like myself, who's been diagnosed with something, who has chronic pain, who has a really difficult time actually writing, when other people that are able-bodied just want to use their computer, it puts us in this And lie spot. about it when they're not supposed to be using right, it. Right, and say like, oh yeah, like I just need it, because like, 
I don't know, I can't write. Like, whatever. If they actually have something good for them, yeah. great. Yeah, I, I got, yeah. No problem. But if you're just like an able-bodied person that's like, I just want to use my computer, great for you. But it puts people that actually need the accommodation at risk because then the professors don't know what to believe, especially when they can't actually see something wrong with someone. And it definitely does cause a like problems. I don't I don't yeah. know how to even like describe these yeah. problems. It, it just it comes it basically so, creates this environment where everybody has some level of doubt about the legitimacy of your illness. Right. And that's so problematic because like it's illegal for someone not to accommodate you if you have those accommodations <coughs> given to you from the like disability center, but like that doesn't mean that your teacher's not going to still give you a hard time or not fully accommodate you because they assume that you're just like not faking, it may be exaggerating, or you don't really need those accommodations. It's so problematic. It, it, it really can be problematic. Sorry, hold on. So, on the note of yeah. talking about chronic illness in college, obviously a big factor of college is social life and making friends. And I know I have unique experiences. Izzy has her own unique experiences. And I really hope that in talking about this, this is in no way like an attack or to make anybody feel bad. This is hopefully a way that we can give people who have friends that are chronically ill the tools and kind of like the mechanism to be the best support that they can be for their friends who are chronically ill. Another yeah. thing I would like to mention is that it's not it's not your responsibility to cure or to help um, or to you know do everything you can because managing a chronic illness and befriending someone with a chronic illness is it's a lot of work and it really can be difficult to like manage so ultimately I, I would just say take this with a grain of salt this is here to help you and just to give you some honest perspectives about what it's like to be somebody who has either been super supported or not supported at all by their friends in college because yeah. of of your chronic condition so on that topic, I'm going to start off like talking a little bit about a bad experience that I had and I mean there's no way that this person's watching it, but like in the strangest chance if you can figure out this is you, I still like have love for you and right. I you know I don't I don't hold this against you. Um, yeah, that's that's another thing I would love to mention like each person who's a friend of someone who has a condition like we still have this love for you and like it's like you tr like you tried your best yes yes exactly like it's not it's not a hatred it's like an i will always love you kind of thing we but so close how could i not at you the know, same like time you had to we have to be super selfish for ourselves because if we don't we'll overexert ourselves and overextend ourselves to the point of making us even sicker but on comprehension and it just exacerbates the whole situation so again yeah, take like it with a grain of salt happened. still have love for everyone um it's just also like you outgrow people and that's okay if you outgrow somebody like people have outgrown us you know like it, it goes both ways <laughs> yeah honestly. it does a hundred percent um i think like one of the biggest things that I've had is I say my sophomore year was the worst year I've like had health wise. I also like, you know, EDS can cause a lot of comorbidities and I know we share one of them, which is POTS. Yeah. But one of the other ones that I have is something called gastroparesis. I actually don't really have it anymore, but I was really struggling to eat. It made it so freaking painful and I feel so nauseous all the time. And you know, a lot of socializing revolves around eating and right. that's really hard when you can't eat so many foods or if you do, you feel yeah. sick. And then I couldn't drink alcohol that whole year. And that was kind of hard too because everybody was drinking and I felt, you know, I was so fatigued. I, I was in so much pain and it was a lot for me. And so I had made this fantastic friendship with a woman who I love so much, um, but, she wanted to keep going out all the time and expected the same from me as a because I was always that person for her the year before and it just it, I couldn't do it and after a certain point where you know she kept expecting me to do this and was upset when I would say I'm so sorry I can't go on that date I don't feel good and then maybe she'd go see me do something else like hang out with a friend and get coffee like I need to choose where my energy goes yes. and that is something that can seem confusing to somebody on the outside because it's like you're telling me you can't do this I just saw you go do that right it's I can't do it all I literally can't I, I had a very similar experience and it it just became hard to verbally explain like I cannot party I do not want to party and the reason is because if I physically overextend myself it's just going to be it's going to be horrible I'm gonna be a terrible person to be around like when people are in pain 
th there's this, this saying when you're in pain you hurt people that like it, it's a com it's a thing that happens I like to think I'm generally nice but you know sometimes like if I'm in an extreme amount of pain I have to be extra careful about myself and set those boundaries and I feel like living with a chronic illness has really made me set my boundaries early on yeah and that's totally. something that people in their 20s are learning all the time that's I think everyone's learning that all the time yeah, all but the time. Yeah. especially when you are in situations where you have somebody who you love so much and you want to go out with like you used to and you're you know 18 and you want to get faced and you just want to enjoy college for what it is and socializing but you physically cannot and then they can't comprehend that maybe you can go sit in the park or you can go for like a cup of coffee like it's just it's I don't even know how to describe it but I feel like it's it's just like a general respect thing of like believing people when they make their boundary clear. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like I also, you know, I'm somebody, I would always think like, I don't consider myself a selfish person. And I think like, I'm always going to be there for my friends. Mm -hmm. Like I hope that all my friends know that yeah. if at any point they really need me. Like I am going to be right. there and I'm going right. to help you in any way that I possibly yeah. can. It, it pains me that especially really it was really that sophomore year in certain ways I had to take a step back and it's funny because like I still in my opinion I was like trying to be so loyal and, and really right. good uh, but it just it wasn't the norm for me right I had to be selfish yeah. and if my friend wanted to come over um, and or like ask me to go out because she's had a really stressful week of school I can't do it I can't right. I, and, and it's, I, it's not from a place of like I don't like you I don't want to do this it's if I do this, I will be hurting myself. And like, at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. And you need to be selfish. It yeah. sucks. It freaking sucks. It does. And this is something that's happened multiple times. Multiple times for me. I feel very fortunate, though, to have some very close people and also to make connections with people like Izzy, yeah. who I've met on the internet, which is insane. I mean, like... We also went to the same school yeah. together. How weird like, is that? It's so, it's so we weird. We had so many of the same friends. I just didn't yeah, know her. Yeah, a lot of mutual friends. And like, it just goes to show, like... The world is very small, but at the same time, people do have these shared experiences, and I think that's why we should be talking about them and making it more normal, and also, like, not to mention mental health. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. Like, dealing with a chronic condition and mental health, like, what's that been like for you? I think for me, like, I, <laughs> shockingly, I, yeah. Gotta love New York City. I mean, I, I have not dealt with depression, and that's one thing I can say that I'm, I'm really thankful um, for. I, I think I'm the only person I know with a chronic illness who hasn't. However, I've certainly <laughs> dealt with anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. And I have anxiety around so many different things. And what adds to it is the fact that in so many different aspects of my life and whatever I do anything, I need to think about what happens if this happens? Where do I go if I need this? Yeah. At all possible times. Right. Like, where you don't have to think about it. Well, what happens if I go that to that place and there's no seat? Am right. I going to go sit on the floor? Right. What happens right. if I feel like nauseous? Like right. I need to think about these things yeah. and it adds so much stress to my life and I'm already dealing with anxiety yeah. that it just makes it worse. And also I just kind of want to throw in here that like, like mental illness, it can 100% be considered a chronic illness. Yeah, like it is. Or a disability. Like, you know, it like is. I just classified by disability literally. in which is literally like one of the top employee um, workplace organizations that advocates for disabled people they consider all kinds of mental health issues um, disabilities as well so if you are seeking any kind of guidance I highly suggest looking at that and looking at their disability in leaders program which I was fortunate enough to be a part of and you get mentored by somebody who is disabled that has similar interests as you hmm. my mentor was incredible he was from Microsoft and he had fibromyalgia which is another debilitating chronic pain disease there's so much more that goes into it but um, definitely people that are watching this young people take a look at that um, down the line and I'll also put the links down below if you guys want to check that out um, and on the on the note of mental health like I always tell my my followers in my community this that like you can always reach out to me I may not always have the spoons to fully respond and don't take my advice as an expert opinion because I am not a doctor or a licensed professional in any way. I just am a college student, a master's student, and I'm learning and I'm also learning about my disability and my chronic condition and how I personally manage it along the way. So that's what I like to talk about. But Izzy, on the other hand, she's going she's gonna to be the real deal. <laughs> I, I'm doing more like of the science -y side of things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think it's like such a cool conversation to have with somebody who knows so much technically about gen like genetics and like 
the science behind it and I also know like more of the experience socially and physically and emotionally and I know how to capture it through my art so it's just been it's so so cool yeah. so cool to be with this one right here yeah I know it really is and I think that's the main thing if you're in college I promise you or high school or middle school or anything like I or school life there are other people who are dealing with similar symptoms to you absolutely it doesn't have to be the same condition yeah but who totally get it and you need to seek it out even though it can be so hard to do that I didn't right. know it was possible but you yeah. can yeah and there's Facebook groups of oh my god Facebook groups I love Facebook pain, groups yeah and EDS like anything Facebook groups about these things where you can connect with people it has like changed me for who I am like yeah, I I'm now so much more open about mm -hmm. what I'm going through. Yeah, and like I had no idea that like anybody was in pain. Like it really just felt like it was just me, and that's the hardest thing because you have to change your life so much, and it's like it's just me, but it's not. Yeah, I think another part of it in terms of joining a Facebook group, I first joined when I started experiencing issues in college. My parents were in them before me because obviously, like I was a kid dealing with this yeah. condition that is kind of rare and like no one really yeah. knows about. So at first, my parents were a part of these groups, my grandma was a part of it, they would, you know, see all these posts and be like, oh, this person's dealing with this, this this person has this, whatever. I'm like, okay. But then when I started having issues myself, I kind of had this, like, moment where I self-actualized my disability and my condition, and I really just, like, stopped running from it and embraced it, and that comes at your own pace. Like, that was not something a doctor could sit me down and say, like, you have this, this is the reality, like you have to deal with it. It was something that I knew I had while well, yes, they were telling me all of that. I could still pretend like, oh, it's invisible. No one's gonna see it. Like I was almost playing this like ableist activist in my own mind yeah. of like, don't, don't acknowledge your condition. Like <laughs> run from it. It's not real. If you keep ignoring it, it's just gonna go away. And like, that's obviously not true. So I'm, yeah, I mean, I think again, it all is at your own pace and it's the same with mental health as well. Um, I've dealt with a lot of anxiety, especially around COVID and seeing people. We're both double vaccinated. Yeah, now, Don't so be chill. alarmed. I'm so chill um, now, but I was Yeah, it, I mean, both terrifying. of us, we spent the whole year alone and that was definitely really isolating. I'm sure a lot of people did, but living with comorbid, comorbidities, living with comorbidities is hard yeah for sure um <laughs> really hard it's also hard I really to say struggled there. Um, <laughs> I, a huge turning point in like how i spoke about my conditions and like how i felt about it was when i actually like realized that i can use the term chronic illness and disabled in yeah. reference to myself i had yeah. no idea right like, I, and i you know when i realized that i actually didn't have a diagnosis yeah i right. went maybe seven eight years actively looking for a diagnosis of something and my doctor is being like there's something wrong you just don't know what um, right and also yeah. on that note like again you have to come to it into your own but at the same time acknowledging it and identifying as a disabled person or as a chronically ill person is something that you should not be ashamed of and it's something yeah. that you know it's just another part of your identity and who you are and it's something that can help you figure out and really navigate situations better in my opinion like if I need an accommodation on the air airline you know if they say like disabled people board I I board right away I board in the front I get assistance to put my bag up I don't have to worry about carrying something crazy I've even started taking wheelchairs to the gates because it's too much for me to really walk that whole thing and be exhausted and like you end up walking miles and miles inside of the airport and the terminals and it's like this whole physically demanding thing and because I am from New York City would go to school in LA I was always traveling back and forth. It's so physically taxing and really taking advantage of and utilizing things that are already set in place and not being afraid to ask about it um, and, and use them is so, but I found it to be one of the most valuable things that's really just elevated my life experience. Yeah, and it's so hard to, to realize that those things are there for you. Right. And like, that's a hard pill to swallow, I think, especially when yeah. you're young. Like, I know, but one thing I started doing back in college, and this is something I highly recommend, is like um, back at Target, whenever I'd go to Target, they oftentimes have those carts, and they have a bunch of them, Ooh, right. and so the you can like, the wheelie ones. carts, yeah. yeah, so you don't have to walk, and walking through Target after walking on my campus at the day was literally impossible. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. Like, yeah. there's a 0% chance I could get through that, so I started doing that, and I was really scared at first because people sometimes do look at you. Yeah. And to be completely honest, like, and I don't like that I did this, but sometimes if 
I would even make sure to wear my knee brace when I went, which right. I wear all the time anyway, because I don't want them to think that I'm faking it or that they come up to me and they say, those are for disabled people. And it's like, and then you're, you're looking like, at one. I am disabled. The disabled doesn't have a, a classic image. Disabled yeah. doesn't have a, a, an exact description. Um, it's something that makes your ability other than an able-bodied person who can do everything without any assistance yeah and that's okay I also have a story like similarly when I was in the JetBlue terminal and I asked like oh can I get a wheelchair accommodation and they were like if you need a wheelchair accommodation you need to have like a license and they I think they they also said like it would have been going through the whole like security gate and I just wanted it from like the other side of security but I like I fully broke down crying because it was a moment where like I realized like I need the help and it's humbling when you have to ask for help especially as somebody like I'm my personality makes me like I'm just like a very like go-getter like I don't like anything get in my way I always am doing the most and when I had to ask for help just to do something as simple as go through a security line and get to my airline gate, um, I felt like inferior. And once I just embraced it, I was like, yeah, I get a free ride. Like <laughs> it makes my life so much easier and I'm not in pain for the whole rest of the flight because I didn't overexert myself. And like now I love it. Like I always make sure to have that accommodation in place um, before my flight. And I note that on my ticket and it's there waiting for me. And like that's, it's something that once you embrace and you just in, enjoy for what it is and what it's in place for, it's just better. Your life's better. You yeah. feel better. Yeah. When you feel better, you're nicer. You when are. you're nicer, more people are happy. <laughs> that's how I think about it. I think it's very true. And you don't always have to be like, I think oftentimes I would think, like you have to be at that point where like you physically can't do it. Right. That's not like, no, 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 no. Like accommodations aren't just there because it's like you're going to die or you can't do it if you try to do it. Like right. it's because it's to help you. It's helping you because it'd be extremely hard for you to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But three, four. Yeah. You know what? Can you guys, why don't you guys let us know what you're curious about? Because we are definitely going to do more videos together about yeah. the city. And let us know. We can talk about chronic illness. We can talk about other things. You can talk about the specifics of our condition. Right. Yeah. Um, whatever you want. Let us know, please. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you all so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And like I said, go follow Izzy.Cornblow and Izzy Cornblow's channel, which I will link below. Give her video, which is basically the part one to this. This is the part two. Give that a like up. Uh, give, like that, up. <laughs> give that a like and a thumbs up and subscribe to her and anyway thanks for watching guys bye, bye. love you